This is the Handy Ad from 1958. It's a little red clicker. It has a display of four digits, and you add using this big toothed plunger over here. This thing is really small. Here it is next to my phone. It fits in your hand real nice. There's this little readout up here with numbers 0 to 10. On the back it's got three knobs. 10, under, thus. It's been almost a year since I made my last video, so I wanted to do something exciting to make it worth all the wait. It's a clicker. Push the thing and it clicks. Now most clickers are meant for just keeping track of counting things. Like a line of people waiting to get into the pool. You know, another person walks by, you click it. One more kid in the bouncy house, you click it. I made another video about the quick adder, also called the pocket counter. Another red plastic clicker. That one lets you click in each digit. But this is the handy ad. It's totally different. Oh, you gotta hold on tight. See, the usual clicker has one or more buttons, which increase the number by one when you click it. You could add more than one if you want by clicking over and over, but that's not really the point. It's meant to be used just as a simple incrementer, like it just adds one each time. Audible clicks make it so you don't have to look at it each time to know that it worked. You usually don't want to look at it that much. You just click it, click it, click it. And every so often you look just to check the count so far. This, I would say, is the basic design philosophy of the clicker. The true essence, the true nature of the clicker. It clicks, it adds one every time, and you operate it without looking. These are the three pillars of clicker design. But this thing, the handy ad, has no interest in satisfying your expectations of clicker design philosophy. It's almost like the people who made this thing were completely unschooled in the academic critical theory of clickers. Do they even know about the three pillars? Let's just take these in order. It clicks. Okay, well, the handy ad does click. Next, it adds one. And here, right away, things get weird. Now, you can add one with this thing, but it's not at all easy. See, when you push your thumb down, it adds a number depending on how far you press. You press it all the way, and it adds ten. Halfway, it'll add five, right? This nice little indicator up here lets you see how much you're adding. But the number one is probably the most difficult number to do with this thing. To add some other number, like 7, it isn't so bad, because once you start your thumb moving, you can sort of get used to the tension in the spring as you go. And you can hear the clicks, and you can anticipate when you should stop. But to click just one, you have to apply just the perfect amount of force to get this thing moving, but not too much that you overshoot. When you only want one click, there's no real point of reference for when to stop, and not enough time to react if you're pressing too hard. See, I'm gonna see if I can add one a bunch of times over and over again. It works, but it's not easy. And the third pillar, you operate it without looking. Well, the clicking is loud enough that you can listen carefully to the clicks, but if you really want to do this accurately, you better look at it. Like if I want to add eight, and then three, and then seven, it's like this. I guess that works okay, but you better believe I'm going to have to look at that little slider to tell what the numbers are. It helps to listen, too. you got to listen carefully to the clicks. really have to focus quite a bit to make sure that you're clicking in the right amount. Now, we got four digits here, but there's no way to click the higher digits. See, like the quick adder had a separate button for each digit? But here, if you want to add in 300, you have to click this thing all the way down 30 times. And who has the time for that? Well, apparently you have enough time to watch a YouTube video about a clicker. And apparently I have enough time to make that video, even though hardly anybody... Anyway, if you want to add in higher amounts, you can use the little knobs on the back. Each little knob can manually adjust one of the digits. These things will still carry even when you're spinning the knob, so you can add bigger numbers this way. So it's like the clicker has a little Pascaline type adding machine inside of it. But the usability on the knobs is really terrible. The knobs are really small. You've got to pinch that thing like Trump. And the resistance of the mechanism actually makes it pretty hard to turn, especially when it's carrying. You've got to use the knobs, though, even if you're not trying to add big numbers, because it's the only way to clear the machine back to zero. 
Since there's no knob for the first digit, you need to click it precisely to make that first digit zero. And then you can use the knobs to clear the other ones. Check this out. I'm going to turn each knob clockwise. See, this one accounts up. One, two, three. And then the next one, turning the same way, it counts down. And the next one is back to counting up. They actually try to help you out by indicating this on the back. But why they got to make that middle one backwards? Actually, this is something you see in some other machines. They did that to save them money on the mechanism on the inside. See, on the inside, each digit is like a wheel, and each wheel is geared into the next one so it can carry. We all know that if you put two gears next to each other, they're going to spin in opposite directions. If you want them to go the same way, then you got to put another gear in between them. I guess the makers of the handy ad were too cheap for that. Speaking of cheap, I found a picture of the original cardboard that this thing came on. It costs one dollar. Sounds like a good deal to me. I'd certainly pay a dollar for one of these today. Apparently it's made of unbreakable Marlex. I love the picture of this lady ready to fight the power. This kid wants to fight the power too. Don't let him get to you, kid. Is there anything more to say about the handy ad? It's obviously supposed to be a clicker, but it's really hard to use like a normal clicker. I'm tempted to say it's a total design failure. But it feels so good when you hold it. It fits perfectly in my hand and it's real satisfying when you push in with your thumb. You give this to somebody and they'll immediately know how to hold it and how it works. So it's beautifully designed but as a clicker the thing itself isn't that great. Is that even possible? Something could be so well designed but still kind of not great? Actually I think it is possible. I've seen great films where nothing really happens. I've seen beautiful paintings that aren't really about anything. I've heard beautiful songs with stupid lyrics. I can even imagine a great YouTube video about a stupid little clicker.